Now we are joined by the man that formerly headed up the strategy for Donald Trump's campaign. He's a best-selling author, researcher. We sell uh, many of his books at InfoWarsStore.com for many years. Uh, but his uh, latest book deals with the sex crimes uh, of Bill Clinton and how his wife Hillary has been defending those. He's got a new book coming out on the Bushes as well. But before we uh, you know, get to that, he's also been exposing Ted Cruz. And we saw a dirty trick with Ted Cruz the other night, undoubtedly his campaign repeatedly tweeting that Ben Carson had quit, uh, leaving off the uh, end part of CNN, uh, you know, quit that night and gone home, hadn't quit the campaign trail uh, to try to get folks obviously to swing over to um, the Cruz campaign. But, but, but getting away from that, I, I want him to give us his breakdown of that going into New Hampshire. We see Marco Rubio suddenly surging because all the media says is, Rubio surging, Rubio surging, Fox, CNN, MSNBC. Is that to cover up electioneering, uh, staging elections, or is that to create kind of a perception that he's winning? Uh, Mr. Stone has worked uh, inside the campaigns of nine administrations. He's worked inside three different White Houses. He's uh, run pro-America campaigns around the world as well. So he is a preeminent election expert. I mean, he's actually won more elections, been involved in more serious stuff than something like a Karl Rove or a David Gergen, in my view. Uh, and so that's obviously why uh, he's one of the top advisors to Donald Trump. And he, he backs Trump because he believes he's the only true anti-establishment candidate. If you see the demonization, if you see Davos attacking Trump, the Bilderberg Group attacking Trump, the editor of the Financial Times of London saying anybody but Trump and their money going against Trump, how could you not support Trump? But separate from that. Uh, now Hillary and what's happening with her, so much to go over in just the 15 minutes or so that we have with Roger Stone of StoneZone.com. Uh, Roger, I know you're a very, very busy man. Thank you for coming on with us today. Alex, I, I'm always honored to be with you because you cut right through the BS and you get right to the important stuff. And let's face it, there's a lot going on today. Wow. Well, you heard me throw out a few of the pieces. What's most important? What should we focus on first? Well, uh, I do think that Trump is on to something here. What was done to him in Iowa is insidious. Look, dirty tricks are something I know a little bit about, and this is a little more precision than people realize. The Cruz people willfully planted a story on CNN, on MSNBC, that Ben Carson was getting out of the race. Prior to that, they had prepared through an enormously expensive targeting and voter identification program a list of the phone numbers and emails of those who were for Carson. Those people were then contacted in the hours before the caucus and told CNN has reported Carson is getting out, switch your vote to Cruz. Now, just a shift of three votes per precinct from Carson to Cruz would have cheated Donald Trump out of his first place finish which is precisely what I think happened. Now, the other thing I learned after enormous uh, uh, examination was how uh, underprepared the Trump campaign was on the ground in Iowa. In all honesty, they ran a third-rate campaign. They did not have the kind of infrastructure and financing that they needed to identify and target their votes. So Trump's incredible showing in Iowa, despite those two disadvantages, shows me again that there's something spontaneous and natural and real about the Trump phenomenon. I agree. This is a giant Trump vindication because despite dirty tricks, despite no ground game, despite having a campaign team that, you know, isn't uh, as professional as some, he still came in a dominant second, should have been a huge landslide first place. Yes, I think that's a very good uh, recap. So it speaks to the inherent strength of Trump. Now, historically, let's look at this. Ronald Reagan skipped the last debate in Iowa. It was very controversial. He was criticized for it. He bounced back in New Hampshire. He then won South Carolina, which was, by the way, moved to the Saturday before the other Southern primaries uh, by some of my colleagues and I. Uh, and then he won South Carolina, meaning he was set up to sweep the South the nomination and the presidency. History can repeat itself here. Trump can win in New Hampshire. Uh, I wish that he were there instead of South Carolina and Arkansas. Uh, this week, I don't call those shots. 
Uh, but he, he does still have a strong lead. Here's what's most interesting. Uh, the guy crap crawling up his back, according to an unaligned but very reliable pollster that I just hung up with, one of the giants in Republican politics, a guy who has no ax to grind, tells me Trump is still number one in New Hampshire, but Rubio is indeed moving up fast, based, as you said, on the reports in the media that he's moving up fast. It's a self-fulfilling prophecy here. Uh, but uh, the order of finish right now, if it were held today in New Hampshire, would be Trump first, Rubio second, and Cruz a distant third, with Ben Carson then fourth. So um, Rubio's the man to watch. The Carson candidacy, pardon me, the Cruz candidacy, in my opinion, Alex, has reached its high watermark in Iowa. How big a game changer was it that he pulled that dirty trick? And that it's done so, so slickly where they take the front part of a CNN report cut the end off, clearly had it all pre-planned when they got attacked to then come out and claim it was all a misunderstanding. Uh, they covered their tracks a little too cleanly. It's a little too open and shut. It's blaring what they did when you read the five or six uh, tweets and statements. Yeah, I look at, did it, did it shift three votes per precinct? It, it very well may have. At a minimum though, it has negated his victory. Uh, he, he has had no bump, he, Ted Cruz, has gotten no bump uh, in the polls in New Hampshire. I think his victory has now been sullied. Is Iowa going to have a do-over? No. Is there going to be a lawsuit? No. But Cruz doesn't get the momentum out of this that might normally be expected uh, because of the circumstances of this revealed dirty trick. Uh, again, uh, the establishment is rallying around Rubio. Chris Christie, John Kasich, and the worst of all, Jeb Bush, these candidacies are moribund. They're done. Uh, Rubio is where the establishment is putting their money, uh, where they're putting their oomph. Uh, and frankly, at this point, he is the man for Donald Trump to be. Well, one more thing I like about Donald Trump is he's smart, his crew's smart, you're smart. If you guys wanted to run this type of classical dirty trick, you probably could have done this and gotten a bunch of Carson votes, but you didn't do it. And, and, and so... Plus, I'm seeing these ads, Trump talked about this, where Trump wants your guns, or Trump is for Obamacare, or when everybody knows he's been against Obamacare from the start. I mean, they're really pulling out the lies right now, and, and that segues into, once you speak to that, sir, I think more than just push polling we know is happening in New Hampshire, more than just the self-fulfilling prophecy of Marco Rubio surging, Marco Rubio surging every channel, you know, he gets the establishment money, uh, Microsoft backing him, Goldman Sachs, all the usual players, is that they may be getting ready to pull some hanky-panky in New Hampshire and are just trying to sell the public that Rubio comes from nowhere and maybe even beats Trump, or he comes in second, as they're now saying in many polls coming out today, and so they can then position him as the new leader to try to destroy uh, Trump. So obviously, he's the guy to take down, and he's so easy to take down because this guy is, is about as conservative uh, as Hillary Clinton, when you really get to his whole history and his whole past, I mean, I am just, Marco Rubio is just a piece of work. So, you know, that's quite a mouthful, but what do you say to that, sir? Well, I think you've got it exactly right. Look, the Rubio people haven't been shy about this. Their strategy has always been three, two, one. Third place in Iowa, second place in New Hampshire, first place in South Carolina. They've revealed their game plan. Uh, and they're well positioned right now to pull that off. I don't want to undersell uh, Marco Rubio in terms of talent. He is, he is a very uh, capable salesman. Uh, and he puts uh, the best face on being a neocon, being a warmonger than I've ever seen. He makes you feel patriotic about the fact that we should go off and march off and send men and women to war uh, in countries where we have no inherent interest. Uh, and it's really just being done to feed the uh, munitions fact, uh, uh, manufacturers. Uh, but he puts a, he puts a very a compelling face on it. Don't underestimate this guy. He's far more dangerous than, say, Jeb Bush, because he's far more compelling. But I don't think uh, his rise in New Hampshire is artificial. It's real. He is coalescing the establishment people, the establishment Republican voters who like things just the way they are today who would be happier with a Republican Congress and a President Hillary Clinton 
if the alternative is Donald Trump. You put your finger on it, Alex. The folks at Davos, the people on Wall Street, the lobbyist consulting class in Washington, they are wetting their pants about the idea of a reform presidency under Donald Trump. Oh my God, a guy we can't buy, a guy we can't bully, a guy who suspects the truth about 9-11, a guy who is going to call fraud uh, on uh, all of the machinations of the political establishment. Um, he really could be a revolutionary figure, and he has scared the daylights out of the insiders. There's the headline, Top Bilderberg, Global Elite, Must Stop Donald Trump. And that is the Financial Times of London's editor, who is, is basically their mouthpiece, a guy that calls for totalitarian world government uh, in, in articles like, and now for world government. But, but it's not just hype. I mean, you've got Barry Goldwater. I think that's Barry Goldwater in that painting behind you, don't you? Yes, indeed. Now, folks that don't know who he was, uh, who, are, who are younger, who don't follow politics, he was the proto-Ron Paul. I mean, would have made an amazing president uh, and free market type guy, the whole nine yards, spoke out against the Trilateral Commission, the plan to take over America, the globalist. Uh, really, uh, Reagan was kind of, I would say, his protege to a great extent. That's whose knee he sat at. And they sold it because Goldwater was against all these wars and garbage, a true Republican, a true constitutionalist in George Washington, that he was going to start a nuclear war and the big mushroom cloud and kill everybody. And that's exactly what they say with Trump. He'll cause a big disaster. He's a big warmonger when he's against all these different wars. So it's an inversion of reality. What do we do? Because obviously I don't think he's really slipped since... Um, since what happened in Iowa, but it could in some people's brain with this talking point, his infallibility, his invincibility aura shield is down. It's down. He's falling. He's falling. Rubio, Rubio, Rubio's rising. I mean, they're, it's like it's a horse race. This isn't a horse race. How do we make sure this doesn't happen? Point out that Rubio looks like he's too young. They're letting him come in. He's got a bunch of dirt in his closet and he's designed to fall to Hillary because folks, I, I, I'm no top expert like you, but I've been watching this stuff for 30 years on air for 20, Mr. Stone. And to me, if you put Rubio in, he is going to make sure Hillary wins one way or another, probably a ringer, and everybody deserves what they get then because we're not going to have separation of powers with Hillary. She's going to go for broke and take over. I know I'm ranting. Am I wrong or am I right? No, I think you're right. Look, I think the easiest way to address the question of Marco Rubio vis-a-vis uh, -vis Donald Trump is to point out that Rubio is funded by a cabal of Wall Street billionaires, Paul Singer, uh, Sheldon Adelson, the Koch brothers, uh, and billionaire car dealer uh, Norman Brayman. Uh, Marco's wife is on Brayman's payroll in what I suspect is a no-show job. Uh, Marco does not have the independence that it would take to bring the fundamental reform uh, that America needs to save ourselves. So he, he's a quizzling. Uh, he's a very talented guy. By the way, he's a very nice fellow. I was in the green room uh, at Fox with him last week. He was very cordial. We're both Floridians. I voted for him uh, in his race against Charlie, Charlie Crist, who was, who was uh, a, a rhino, who was at that time a Republican in name only. Uh, but Marco Rubio doesn't have the experience, doesn't have the seasoning, uh, doesn't have the executive ability of a Donald Trump. Trump is a guy who's built a multi-billion dollar business. Oh, when you see it's Rubio right. give these speeches, they're exactly cadence like a 10-year-old at a school play who's memorized it. Reminds me of my 11-year-old daughter at a school play. She does a great job, but it's memorized. I mean, he I'm not being mean. He just, he just comes off as amateurish. He's not going to become the president, folks. If you don't vote for Trump in New Hampshire and in South Carolina, it's a vote for Hillary Clinton. So all you fake Republicans out there, if you don't do this, I mean, you're, you're the morons. Uh, look, I totally agree. Trump's problem here is a fundamental one, and that is before he can dispatch Marco Rubio, he must first dispose of Ted Cruz. Ted Cruz at this point has no prospect of being the nominee. And although I have to admit, I was initially very impressed with Ted uh, and his current rhetoric and his brief record in the U.S. Senate, when I dug in further, everything I found was troubling. He was a top issue advisor to George W. Bush. It was Ted Cruz who recruited John Roberts to the Bush team. John Roberts, as Supreme Court justice, would ultimately give Obamacare. us Obamacare. Ted went to Harvard and Princeton. Not many conservatives coming out of there. I'm just saying, as he would say. Uh, his wife, Heidi, deputy 
the NSC 